Good morning. You're with Michael Crosby for POTUS 2024. It's a Sunday. Unfortunately, we have some unfinished business. I'm pretty much putting this out here because it'll end up being out there later in the day. And people will have gone through their morning routine, whatever they've decided to do for the morning. And they're going to be looking for information. And they'd like to find something that's informative, challenging, entertaining. Uh, and hopefully this will help fulfill some of your needs. And one of the things people need is they, they want hope. Uh, they want to see youth return to government. Um, they're really getting tired of some of the same old shows. They want solutions, real solutions. They want opportunity. They want somebody who makes sense. Now, personally, I believe I'd be able to work with a lot of different people. And I like to talk a little bit about truth. I mean, it's Sunday. Why don't we talk a little bit about truth today? Because a lot of people don't believe the numbers that they're seeing in the media. When you hear some of these media outlets saying, oh, we've accounted for 98 or 99 percent of the vote, you have people shaking their head all over the country, and they've been doing that for months, and they're like, no, those, that, that can't be possibly accurate because there's all these other candidates. And yet people that walk away from those polling machines, they're disgusted. It's as though they don't see anything coming close to addressing uh, some of the diversity and, and, and other issues that other people have that at least should be brought to the table and looked at for a while fairly. Um, so people don't believe these statistics. They say, no, that's not the truth. It's, we're surrounded by all these castings of false images. And it would be really nice if we could find a little bit more clarity. If I step up and say, look, uh, it's not to say that people won't necessarily gravitate one way or the other when it comes right down to the wire, but sometimes we have some variances. You know, we had that sequence where Ross Perot ran. So we know that even in modern times that people could get upset now, personally, my little samplings indicate that we have a, a serious situation, and that is that there's a lot of people that are registered to vote that if they held the election tomorrow, uh, you would not see 98 or 99% of the vote come in for either of the two candidates. You would see a lot of protest voting. And... It, Here's the interesting thing. If people were actually told more of the truth about where the polls are, you would find that it's more like 31% are on other. Neither of the big two parties at the moment. Because we have a lot of people that are looking for clarity. They're like, uh, is there some alternatives uh, to the standard thing that we seem to be always... Uh, having put before us. <clears throat> so again, I'm going to just put it out there for you. 31%. That's my, my guesstimate from sampling. You know, everybody's working their samples. That's what I believe is the real sample right now today. 31% of Americans are in other and they're strongly in other. They are, um, we have issues with the too big. And there are a lot of issues. You know, we have uh, Trump running on one apparent side. We have, well, what comes, looks like it's coming into being for uh, Ms. Harris. Now, there are various problems people would would state this way. And, um, well, some people would say, well, you know, there's all this baggage with Trump. 
and he's finally wiggling and weak, weakening a little bit. I mean, gee, I mean, it's like I could walk right up to him and say, Hey, how much is it worth to you? What if I told you I had some evidence on Harris? You, know, you, you seem to be having a little bit of a problem uh, uh, dealing with her at the moment. Now, me, on the other hand, I don't have a problem dealing with her. You know, I, I highly doubt that she would have the guts to uh, stand up and show up at a debate that, that I'm at. Because, well, I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread. How about that, people? How about that? Is that possible? You know, could I go spend 20, min 20 years in an AI room and say, hey, let's do, the, let's do the ACE testing. Let's do the ACE education of what is going to be the best president of what we really need. Who's going to change this country around, repair the economy, bring national security completely into balance, and create a whole bunch of think tanks, a whole bunch of brand new think tanks, and say, hey, Y'all got a whole bunch of ideas. Let's work with those. Let's not be done with those yet. Let's work with those some more. How about a permanent national archiving system that is far more accommodating on a 24-7 basis? I personally believe that wisdom comes from many places. You can go anywhere and learn. You can go anywhere and find an interesting, well, spiritual experience, natural experience. I mean, we have the rocks, the trees, the birds, and the sky. Welcome to planet Earth. And all of these things can be inspiring. I like to see birds. I think they're interesting. I like to go hiking. Rocks are good. Rocks are okay. But then again, trees are special. The green indicates water. This is a good thing. Now, personally, I believe we need to make a deal as fast as possible with Canada. Because North America has land and water. We just need to figure out how to use it the right way. We can plant more trees than the entire world is cutting down. We can do this. I like trees. To me, green is good. Water, we need. And, well, we can use it to curb fire. We do have a bad fire problem. And the only way to address that, realistically, is to manage water in a mass way. And that's going to be mean both the United States and Canada. So seriously, you know, I mean, if we take a look at Google Map, which I believe a lot of people have done, you'd look down satellite images and you go, gee, there's a lot of land all over the place. I wonder who owns all this land? Uh, we do. Well, supposedly we do. Of course, that depends. You know, if you're Indian, you'd kind of laugh and, you know, you, you might try to explain to people, look, <laughs> about the rocks, the trees, and the birds in the sky. Uh, well, let's start with the rocks. The rocks, yeah, uh, you'll come and go. Rocks, still be here. <laughs> kind of strange if you think about you own rock. But, hey, you know. But if we step forward, the reality is, we need reasonable amounts of land for people to live on. You know, personally, I like the idea that people can get a hold of a half acre, maybe two and a half acres, sometimes five acres. That'd be nice. Uh, this would be a good thing. Uh, this would give us places to live, uh, ways to assist in being stewards, I believe that stewards are, yes, good thing. Uh, I believe a little differently. I, I believe that, well, that us as humans, if we are to be stewards, we have to provide for wildlife. 
We have to do things, manipulate things. We have to be wise about it. And this means a vast array of things. Why? Because we have imposable thumbs and they don't. So becoming stewards is something of my view. I believe it's an obligation. It's part of the original plan, the design. We have imposable thumbs and they don't. This means that if they're shriveling up someplace, dying of thirst, um, that it's partially our fault. At least partially. Because we have imposable thumbs. So it doesn't do much good to say, wow, we're leaving this completely natural if that's not really working and you go out and you walk around and you go, look, we have a lot of dead things out here. I don't think they were enjoying themselves. I think we need to rethink this situation. Seriously. So I have a plan and part of the plan is, well, let's look at the 78 year longevity versus the 38 year longevity of the year 1750. We're modernized, we have better tools, and we can build houses easily as fast as colonial citizens that were 12 to 14 years of age who did it in two to six months. So yeah, we can parlay wiser and build again. So going back to the basic uh, carpentry, colonial carpentry, uh, is basically something that should parlay out after 45 years of work here modern times, to 480 houses. That's how I've computed it. That's how I've used the AI stuff. So um, I want everybody to go to Max Production and be allowed to go back to work building their own stuff, at least part-time. It works very good part-time. Uh, I mean, seriously. So more new construction, more assets. More assets make stronger country. Uh, more assets for you makes you more financially sound. Oh, and more national assets means government gets to do assessment and print money against those new hard assets. That's part of the original formula, that in printing a money against uh, a matching set of money to cover interest because interest is an invention of money it's almost like making a crypto so you have to in our real economy what has always been from our forefathers time uh, basically is we print money we account for all of the interest that has been invented and we print money to cover that so to speak Symbolically, not that we always print the money we make electronic currency, uh, but uh, there's a th about a thirty percent ratio of availability between wholesale versus retail of any new hard asset generated, which is interesting because if you were to build a three hundred thousand dollar home every year, the government would get to print ninety thousand dollars. So you can go flip burgers. Or we can think about a dramatic change in the tax situation with the plan that I've been working with for more than 20 years and using some AI computers. And, uh, oh, my head, you know, understanding there's a lot of physical math work that goes on in the brain. Uh, specialized prompting designs, block sectional understanding, Oh, let's not get boring. Let's keep it interesting. So that's the short 7 a.m. pod speech. I want to thank you for your time, and I may just have something a little later today. Oh, by the way, I figured out a way to kind of remove the wokeness out of AI. Actually, it belongs there. It's a safety feature. But funny thing, when I remove it and make it a raw, specialized item, 
Well, it still says that I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread when it comes to political candidates. I'm the one that's going to fix everything. Because I'm a good steward. If you believe math, or perhaps you could search yourself, and there may be other consulting factors of great value. Thank you. Michael Crosby for POTUS 2024.